Welcome to the much anticipated wastewater treatment notes. Um, so we're going to be looking at what happens after the water leaves your house and goes down into the pipes. Now, <laughs> a few years ago, we took a ride over to the wastewater treatment plant in Denton. The bus driver, so I told her where we were going, and I, I found it a little hard to believe, but not too hard to believe that she said to me, what do you mean where the wastewater goes when it leaves your house? Doesn't it just go in the ground? And I was a little dumbfounded because I assumed that everybody knew that it went into a pipe and then had to go somewhere. And But it's no surprise, really, that a lot of people don't understand what happens when all that wastewater leaves your house. So the first thing that you need to know is that approximately 90% of the, the things that leave and go into a sewage pipe are going, uh, are, are water. It's mostly water. So the whole purpose of wastewater treatment really is to figure out how do we save as much water as possible. So what is it about? It's about how do we save as much water as possible? Water is one of those things that we use uh, an unlimited amount of time. The same water on the earth today is, is the same water that's been around since the dinosaurs. Uh, it's been filtered, reused, and it's real simple. It's H2O. That's what it is. So everything that attaches to water, um, travels with water, that's really sort of what we're looking at in this whole process. Um, so when the water leaves your house, and let's see if we can write on this little document right here. So the water comes in uh, as wastewater. Excuse me. Um, now, it leaves your house, it leaves your neighbor's house, it travels through pipes, so it will come in through a pipe, um, and then it will start joining into bigger and bigger pipes until it gets to um, different places along the way. Now, mostly water travels downhill, right? So most of the wastewater treatment plants are placed at low points, which are usually near, guess what? More water. So for example, um, they're gonna flow into a creek or into a, a river itself, the water will be discharged. And that's because water flows downhill. So occasionally though, let's say you have a change in landscape. So your house, let's say it's a little, the terrain's a little bit more like this, all right? So let's say that your house is up here, right? So you get your house up here, and then the water is going to travel down, but the waste station or the wastewater station is like over here. So that means at some point it's got to go back uphill before it comes back down again. So what they have to do is, is construct what's known as a lift station. So at these little low points, they will essentially build a building, and it won't be this high because we're in Texas, but they'll build a building and they'll have pumps that will get the water up high so that it can then travel downhill again. So finally, it's gonna get down to the place where um, it's going to get treated. All right, so that's sort of the basis for how it happens. Now, in our municipal water supply, um, we, we treat municipal water. Municipal means city water. So every city essentially has either a tie-in with another city or some other way in which they're gonna treat the water themselves. So how do we pay for this? What, that's the question. How do we pay for it? Let me put that on there. How do we pay for sewage treatment? Well, if you look on your water bill, 
you will notice um, and go ask your parents to see the water bill. You're going to find several things. You're going to find water usage. That's the water coming into the house. And you'll also see uh, sewage on there. And that's what we're talking about today. And you're also going to see like trash disposal. So it, this is a real important point that I want to make here. So hear me now. Believe me later. When we talk about disposing of our trash or our waste, let's just call it waste, there are two kinds of waste. We either have, let's just do it this way, we either have solid waste and we have liquid waste. Those two. And they need to be treated differently. So we're talking about liquid waste in this particular case. Our solid waste, which we pay for through our, it's not taxation, it's really based on what you use. Um, the solid waste, the things that go in your trash can, need to be solids. Not liquids, not any, anything that is mushy or wet. We need to save those for liquid water treatment. And then the solids need to go with the solids. Dry, dry as possible, honestly. Um, and there's some good reasons for that we'll, we'll talk about with landfills. But the liquid is really important that we pull that out as well. So solids need to go with solids. Liquids need to go with liquids. And that also means that we need to do whatever we can to keep solids out of our liquid waste. And so we're going to talk about how they go about doing that through the wastewater treatment because wastewater, though it comes in at about 90% um, liquid, we still have to deal with the solids that are there as well. All right, so I have two schematics here for you to consider as we're going through this. Um, and I will share these with you on, um, as well. Well, you can look at them as we're going through this. So let's just come down, this first one's pretty complicated, so let's just come down and look at this second schematic, which shows two things. It shows primary treatment, so primary treatment, and it shows secondary treatment. All right, so the thing that you need to understand about primary treatment, it is, it is the removal of solids and fats. The other thing is that it is mechanical. So everything that happens in primary treatment involves some sort of mechanical means to do it. So it could be things like it's showing right here. Um, it could be screens. So think about the, some of the things that are coming in through waste that we've thrown away in the trash can, I mean in the toilet or gone down the sink. So some of the things that people put down there, uh, things like condoms or uh, tampons or toilet paper, paper towels, kids put toys down there. There's all kinds of things. Um, a lot of our foods that go down there these all have to be removed from the water. So what they're gonna do first is they're gonna run it through a series of mechanical means to get those things out. So they're gonna run through screens. Um, maybe combs are used. Now in, in uh, Flower Mound, what they use is they basically grind it up. So they have a great big grinder um, and the grinder will take all of those big pieces, grind it down into tiny little pieces. So think about the garbage disposer on your uh, sink in your kitchen at home. If you have one, it's going to grind that down into fine pieces. However, it still has to be dealt with once it gets there. So some other things that will be done. So those are going to remove... Uh, those, those are going to remove those big pieces of solids that work their way into the sewage. Clothing. Um, oh, I mean, it's just kind of crazy what people do to throw down there. But they, you know, leave it to your imagination. Um, 
The other thing is that will come down um, that they'll use are uh, basically centrif uh, centrifuge. So the centrifuge is going to use that centripetal force to remove what's called grit. So if you'll notice, there's a it says grit chamber, grit disposal. Um, these are small solids. Um, and it's things like um, undigested food, such as corn. Huh? Um, it could be gravel. It could be sand. So all of those are going to get removed in the grit, uh, the grit chamber. Um, another thing that will happen in this mechanical means, so we have spinning, which is what the centrifuge is, so it spins. Uh, we have the screens, the combs. Um, we will also have settling. Now the settling process is going to happen in a couple of different ways, a couple of different processes. But um, this is what's going on in that primary clarifier right there. So settling is going to happen. Um, another thing is skimming. So settling is going to, um, these will be like really small, very small particles. Um, another thing is skimming. Am I spelling that right? No, I'm not. Let's try that again. Okay, so we have uh, skimming. Now what skimming does <clears throat> is it's going to remove things that float. And some typical things that float, that's also known as flocculates. And I'll explain that here in a second. Things that float uh, would be things that are lighter than water, right? So lighter than water. Um, and some real typical ones are fats oils and grease are also referred to in the biz as fog. So fats, oils, and grease have to re be removed in the primary treatment part of it. So we have all mechanical means. We have screens, combs, grinders, centrifuges, settling, skimming, and there also is um, basically pressing or squeezing because you remember that the the way the, what we're treating is we're treating the water so the goal here is to get as much water as possible uh, from your treatment so they're going to want to do things to cause the water to um, basically capture as much water as possible so they're going to press and squeeze and mostly they do that with the sludge to try to get as much water as possible out of it before they deal with it and i'll talk about what happens with these solids um, and the sludge here in just a moment so this is primary treatment remember primary is simply the removal of the solids through mechanical means and those can be all kinds of ways in which you grab out as much solids as possible. So some of the other solids that we might have are things like sticks or um, human solid waste that end up in uh, the trash, food particles, um, uh, hair, you name it. If it's a solid, it's gonna be removed in that process. All right, let's move on down to secondary treatment. So in secondary treatment, what we're using is uh, here, we're gonna remove um, a couple of different things. One thing we're removing is suspended organic solids. Now suspended just means that they're very, very tiny, 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 tiny solids. And they're organic, so think about that. It's the things that are in our feces, 
Um, it could be even things within our urine. Um, and it could be tiny, tiny food particles. Whatever it is that's suspended and cannot be removed through primary treatment is going to have to be removed in secondary treatment. So that's the first thing. Another thing that has to be removed are nitrates and phosphates. Now, the, this is extremely important. Because if we do not use these, and if you'll remember, these are both contained in fertilizers, right? So they're big component in fertilizers, meaning that, that plants like to eat them. If we don't remove them, so we ha must be removed. And if we don't remove them, what will happen is that it will get into the water supply. So once it's released or afflu affluented, um, it could end up causing what's known uh, as eutrophication. So if not removed, it could lead to eutrophication or basically the overgrowth of algae. And when in next week or in our, in the next lecture on eutrophication, I'll spell it exactly what that means. But this is super, super important. Those, those nitrates and phosphates get removed. Um, the other thing is it's going to remove, um, <laughs> oh, pathogens. Yes. And this is really important as well. So we're going to remove pathogens. Now, how does secondary treatment work? Secondary treatment uses bacteria. So the bacteria that is already present, so it's naturally occurring uh, bacteria, and what we're going to do, let me spell this out, uh, what they're going to do is essentially make sure that the bacteria that is naturally found in the wastewater gets fed and gets all the nutrients and all of the oxygen that it needs. So we're gonna use two kinds of bacteria. We're gonna use, first of all, aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria in order to remove all of these things right here. So we're gonna remove organ suspended organic solids or nitrates or phosphates, and then there's a kind of a battle that happens over the pathogens. Now these pathogens are also gonna take another step to be removed, and it's really important that all of these things are removed. All right, so um, the first one here, uh, if you'll notice, is a, it's a picture of this secondary treatment. So what happens in secondary treatment, I've got a couple of pictures right there to show you what they look like. Um, this one is aerobic. So aerobic bacteria, and we're going to use a couple of different kinds. We're going to use denitrifying, um, and then all, also um, anything that's going to just basically consume um, any of the consumers of organics, right? So they're going to break down. It's really important that they break down all of the suspended solids that we have and remove the nitrates. And they're going to do this through a denitrifying process. So we're looking at denitrifying bacteria. Now what you'll notice in this picture is that it looks a lot like chocolate milk. <laughs> um, that's not necessarily the poop because what happens is when the water by the time it gets through primary treatment it looks pretty clear um, so this is basically what you're looking at is um, the bacteria that is at work you'll also notice that there's a lot of bubbles on the top of this and that's because they super oxygenate it And the reason they do this is because um, they, the bacteria are aerobic. So they're going to super oxygenate it to get their numbers. So it's going to cause an elevation in the numbers of these different um, types of bacteria. 
Now, it's really interesting because um, if you go down to the wastewater treatment plant, what you'll see there is a highly sophisticated laboratory. So they take samples out of this all the time and examine it, and they can tell by the types and the kinds of bacteria that are located in each step what the quality of the water is at that particular given moment. So uh, microbiology is really a big thing when we talk about water treatment. All right, so what they're gonna do then is this is gonna, this is gonna start to um, occur. Now they, they live, they die for a real short a period of time. They have new, new ones born and so forth and so on. And so um, they have to send this water then to be uh, to another settle, settling or clarifying. And the clarifying tanks are going to start to settle out uh, sludge. Okay, so that's one. So the aerobics, they're gonna first use the aerobics. And you'll notice this is way out in the open, just like that. Um, but then they're also going to send the water to an anaerobic tank. Now in the anaerobic tank, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna remove all oxygen. Okay, so once you remove all oxygen, now the anaerobic bacteria can go to work. Okay, and now what happens when we use anaerobic um, environments? Well, th since we've removed all the oxygen, they are now going to go through a fermentation process. Okay, and they're going to start fermentation, and when they do, they're going to produce methane gas. All right, so they're going to produce that CH4. Um, so, what did we do about that? Because this cannot be released into the atmosphere. Okay, cannot be released into the atmosphere. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to burn this off. Um, and they're going to do that through um, a couple of different things, the way they can deal with it. So I'm going to come on down. I'll talk uh, past the picture. I didn't leave myself quite enough room for this. So we're going to move down just a little bit, and I'll show you what a couple of these look like. All right, so first we have this, uh, this first one. You'll notice those tanks. And what they do is they, they essentially, one, if you'll notice, the one on the left is higher than the one on the, in the middle is higher than the one on the right, and so forth and so on. So um, what that does is they move the water very slowly through these tanks, through gravity, to get it lower and lower and lower. And after a while then, they're gonna stop that process and turn it off. All right, you'll notice in the second picture, uh, more of the same. So this is a bigger plant than the one that we looked at before. Now you'll notice back here in the back, you have algae. That shows you that there is still a presence of nitrogen and phosphate because that algae is forming along the top. Now they don't try to get rid of that because it's actually you know, taking in a lot of the products um, and helps with the, with the process as well. But um, they're gonna try to remove that as they go along. This third picture I have down here, once again, shows you those, um, that secondary uh, process in work. Um, that picture is from South Padre Island um, and their water treatment plant is located, of course, South Padre is very, very narrow uh, island between the Gulf of Mexico and the Laguna Madre. And so they have to, they have to discharge this water. Um, and what they're going to do is they're going to discharge it into the Laguna Madre. So I'll show you a picture of what that looks like, I think. Maybe not. Um, but they discharge that actually and form a wetlands in there. So um, I'll talk about that here in just a second. Okay, so now um, the, let's finish off here with the anaerobic bacteria. And I'm gonna take this off real quick and skip down just a little bit so we'll have more room. 
Okay, so our anaerobic bacteria, and those are in enclosed tanks. So usually it's gonna look like a, like a tank room. It looks just like this, all right? And inside there, it's completely cut off from oxygen and they're going to produce methane gas. Now, if you'll remember, methane gas is a very potent greenhouse gas. And so it cannot be released into the atmosphere in high numbers. So they have to monitor this very closely. So what they'll do is they'll actually take that and burn it. Now, they can, when they burn it, it's going to produce CO2. Now, CO2 is still a GHG, right? But it's not as potent as the methane gas. It's, it, the methane gas is like 22 times, 21 times higher than CO2. So while we're still releasing methane gas, I mean, uh, a greenhouse gas, it's not as bad as releasing the methane. Uh, so some of these plants, some of these treatment plants can actually take this process right here and they can create or generate energy from it. So they can use it to generate electricity by burning off um, that methane. They can actually use that to heat water, to create steam, to turn a turbine. Um, and if you'll notice, there is actually in this picture right above, a transform station um, there at South Padre, and they may use that uh, for some of their energy. You can see off on the left-hand side, there actually is some more of those clarifying tanks. They're round, and they have skimmers that move across the top, and they also have what's known as a scum bucket, and a scum bucket collects scum that comes off of the top of the water, so they skim it and create scum. All right, so once we are done with our anaerobic bacteria, we have most of our impurities removed at this point. So, but we still have bacteria that is around. So what we have to do now is remove the bacteria. And you're not actually removing it. We're actually just going to um, basically neutralize it. So that requires what's known as tertiary treatment. So we've had primary treatment, which is the mechanical means of removing solids. We have our secondary means, which is using living or, or um, biologic means of removing solids, nitrates, phosphates uh, from our water. And by the way, how do nitrates and phosphates get there? Um, nitrates actually get into the water, mostly through our foods. Um, we will eat foods that are high in nitrates. One is processed meat or cured meat. So nitrates are used basically as a um, preservative. And we don't use those, so we just urinate or, um, or defecate those out and so they show up in the water the uh, and sometimes in our food as well the other thing is the phosphates will get there through our soaps so if you'll recall in that uh, video i showed you the soap makes up a lot of what we pour down the drain um and so we have to deal with it and so we're they've moved toward detergents that have less phosphates in them but there's still a good amount, so they have to be removed in that process. All right, so let's move on real quick to tertiary treatment. Tertiary treatment is the neutralizing, that doesn't look right. Okay, it is the, um, is it neutral? Yeah, neutralizing, or killing bacteria. And the primary one we're talking about are pathogens, pathogens. So we don't want to put pathogens down into our water supply. 
Um, so what they're going to have to do then is we're going to have to put it through some sort of means to neutralize or kill those those uh, bacteria. And they do this through a couple of diff or several different methods. Um, one of the biggest one is, is, is the use of chlorine gas. Now chlorine gas is a very good at killing bacteria. That's why we put it in swimming pools um, and why we treat our water before it, when it comes out of the out of the lake or the reservoir is we use chlorine gas to do it. But chlorine gas um, is sort of the, it's kind of an old method and um, it is dangerous <laughs> because chlorine gas is highly um, toxic if it's, if it's inhaled. So uh, they have to be really, really careful in plants that use chlorine gas um, in order to to avoid having those um, having leaks so it's it can it can leak uh, but it's very effective at killing things um, some newer methods that have been used and are being used one is uv radiation so uv radiation is very effective at um, killing bacteria so what they'll do is they'll run it they'll after the water has gone through the the secondary treatment, um, it's been clarified, it's had all the sludge removed, and now it's about ready to be released into back into the water supply. Um, they will run it very slowly through a series of um, UV radiation lights. So um, those are highly guarded as well so that they don't affect other things like UV radiation can cause mutations. And that's basically what it does here is it causes mu mutations in the bacteria that render them essentially um, inert or um, sterile. So uh, causes sterility. Causes them to be sterile. So now they can't reproduce. All right, another one is that it's being used is ozone exposure. And we'll talk a lot about ozone gas here in the next unit, but for right now, ozone exp exposure, and it works similarly to the other methods. They just run it through really slowly. Um, and some other methods, one old, old one is lime. So they'll use a lime treatment. Um, and the lime essentially removes or settles out the bacteria. One is microfiltration. Now the flower mound one uses a combination of, um, of things. They use some microfiltration, which is just means that they're super, super fine um, filters and they the water passes very, very slowly through those and is able to remove a lot of the bacteria. Um, they, but they also use radiation as UV radiation as well. And another newer technique is electron beam exposure. This one is very similar in that it works a lot like the UV radiation one, where it causes those mutations that cause them to be sterile. All right, now one thing, let me skip this down real quick. Let me move, remove that, and we'll come back to that. Um, after tertiary treatment, so now we have done this, um, the water is going to now be ready. So, so water is ready to be released. And what they're going to do is essentially they're going to pour it. It's going to go into the uh, a stream or a river and that will send it back down into the watershed. Now at this point it's really important that that water be as um, clean as possible. So now we've removed solids from it, we've removed our pathogens, 
we've removed the nitrates and phosphates and and we can move it on down into the stream and this water that is released is known as effluents whoops can't spell try one more time whoops isn't this fun isn't this just so much fun okay um effluents Okay, so the water has left the building. It's left the treatment plant. So now we have to say, what about the solids? Where are they going? All right, so we have two different kinds of solids. The first one is the solids, the primary treatment. Oh, what happened there? Okay, the primary treatment solids. So these are the big things, right? So what they're going to do is they're actually going to, and I, don't, I think it's probably on this first chart up here. Um, yeah, so if you'll notice in this second, um, in this first one, there it shows you uh, down here at the very bottom, once they've centrifuged everything out, there's a sludge storage, um, they've um, sent it to the digester, which is, the digester is essentially those aerobic and anaerobic bacteria digesting those organics. Um, and then they're going to store the sludge, and then they're going to send the sludge to a couple of different places. So let's just look here for a second at what that is. So the, the primary treatment, where you're going to have those big pieces, right, the big stuff, Those are going to be essentially loaded onto a truck, um, onto a dumpster, and it's going to be sent to the landfill. So ask yourself the question, why would we put a solid down the drain to be treated in the water treatment plant when it's going to end up in the landfill anyway? Doesn't it just make more sense to put things directly into the solid trash to begin with? Uh, heck yes. So there's some things that um, probably should never get flushed. One is flushable wipes. So if it says flushable on it, oops. It ain't, okay? So flushable is a very loose term. Yes, it can go down there, but it should not. So be very careful about something that says it's flushable. It can go down into the system, but it's still gonna have to be removed and sent to the landfill. All right, um, now once we've settled, so all of this stuff, the very, very tiny particles, after secondary treatment. All right, so after secondary treatment, you have sludge left over. And it's just what it sounds like. It's real thick. Um, it's got a lot of still organic solids in it, suspended or solids that have organics that have been left behind. Um, and so this stuff right here, this sludge, has to be dealt with and they, uh, they've sque they'll squeeze the water out of it and now it's going to sit there some places do um, let it dry so they'll dry it out um, and then they may do a couple things if they dry it out they'll probably send it to an incinerator So it's going to be burned. Now it's still going to create ash, right? So that's going to create ash, which still has to go where? To the landfill. So eventually it can end up in the landfill anyway. Sometimes they'll just dry it out and they'll take it directly to the landfill. Another thing that can be done is it can be turned into compost. 
Now the city of Denton does this and they call theirs dino dirt. Um, down in Austin, they call it dillo dirt. <laughs> and essentially it's turned into compost. So um, they have a, a some places on hand. They just basically scrape up all that sludge and they put it over there. They mix it in so um, it gets gets mixed. with um like um all of their branches and and grass trimmings so it can be mixed with grass trimmings um with um uh, when they put on like those what do they call those grinders like the grind stump grinding or um wood material that's what i'm trying to think of like wood chips and so then the, the um, and that sludge, by the way, the sludge still has a lot of bacteria still in it. And so the bacteria can then again go to work in this compost and can start really putting together a really nice um, organic mix that can then be used. Um, and the, the city, so the city uses it And they also can then turn around and sell it. So they sell it to consumers, um, which is kind of funny because what that means is that we basically buy our poop back. Ah, okay, so there you have that. Um, and I believe that's about it. Um, let's see, couple things. One is what about septic systems. Some of you might actually have septic systems on your at your home. Uh, septic systems are usually um, for landowners that have a lot of property. Usually uh, with more than, an, than one acre of land, they will use um, a septic system. So essentially what you have, and let's see if I can draw a little picture here real quick of what we're talking about. So um, you have your uh, you have your land out here, right? And you have your house sitting on top of over here. Oops. So your house. And you're going to have your um, a pipe running out. And what they'll do is up underneath the ground they will have a container essentially down here like this and so the pipes will run out of the house down into this open container and so all of your um all of your poop or the water essentially from the house is going to start to come in here and fill up now it will also have solids in it um, and over time, it's going to get full, more and more full. So eventually what they have to do is they have to come in and empty it out. So, and I don't know how long it takes, but the, a truck will come along, right? A truck, huh, come along and they will basically hose it out. All right. So they'll suck it all up. They'll put it in the truck, and guess where they take it? It goes to the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> and at that point, it undergoes the same kinds of, of things. Now, there are some new sophisticated um, septic systems that can actually do um, secondary treatment there on the property. Now, the water that's in here, what it's going to happen with it is that um, the water is going to start um, seeping out into the ground. So it's going to start to move down out of the septic system and eventually it's going to make its way down here into the groundwater. So we have groundwater and eventually that's where it's going to go. So that's the septic system. The last thing I want to talk about with you guys, let me check my notes real quick just to make sure, um, is 
Oh, two things. The first one is what is um, considered to be green water treatment. So I mentioned um, one is using wetlands. So John Bunker Sands, um, JBS, down in um, East Dallas, what they do is they take and they use primary treatment. So they'll take out their solids um, through the screens and the combs and all that kind of stuff. And then they release the water into some wetlands that have been created. And the wetlands slowly, so what it does is it sort of slowly moves its way along like this. It's a gentle slope and they have plants out here growing, right, like that. And they have their, so then the water is going to move through these plants like this. And in there, the, so the plants are there, it's real marshy, um, and they, they're going to start to remove the impurities. So they're going to take advantage of the nitrates. All right, so the nitrates and the phosphates are perfectly fine because they're going to use those for fertilizer to grow these plants right here. So... Um, and, and this is a really cool place because it's, a, it's home to a lot of um, aquatic life and home to a lot of birds. They actually have an eagle pair that have nested on one of the high lines out there. So um, they can use that. And so this is becoming a bigger deal. Um, and it's, it's really exciting to see some of this stuff happen um, over time. But green water treatment simply means no chemicals are used. Now, think about this just a second. We've talked about primary treatment. Were there any chemicals used? No. Secondary treatment, any chemicals used? No, we just used bacteria. So where is it being used? It's being used in that... Um, in the removal of the pathogens. So in this particular case, um, no in green treatment, no chemicals are used. So um, you can actually say that UV radiation, microfiltration, um, and um, electron beam are all types of um, green water treatment. So none of them use chemicals to remove those pathogens. The only one that really qualifies for that is anything that uses lime or chlorine to remove it. So that is what green water treatment is. It can be either done through something that's really kind of naturalistic looking, like the, um, like the JBS, or it can be something that's um, a little just, it still looks like a water treatment plant, but they're just not using the chemicals to make that happen. Um, energy used in water treatment. So most of the energy that's used is uh, the blowers that blow oxygen into um, these, uh, these treatments right here into the secondary treatment. There's pumps that are used that require energy, um, but this, uh, this blowing of the oxygen into that secondary treatment takes up the energy. Most of the rest of it is done through gravity and doesn't require a lot of energy. All right, final thing that I want to talk about is what cannot be removed because there are some things within our current way of um, doing water treatment that we have not been able to remove. Uh, one is um, prescriptions. Um, and there's some concerns about several of these. One is hormones. So when you take birth control, um, for example, or testosterone treatment, 
your body can only metabolize a certain number of those and then they are released into your urine. Um, and if they are not treated, they are causing some issues um, in water. So the, what we're seeing is some, uh, something called the feminization of um, aquatic life and pr fish primarily and amphibians. Okay, so that's a problem. Another one with prescriptions is things like antidepressants. So some of the antidepressants are actually having a rebounding effect and they're, what they're doing is they're causing um, some fish to not be able to uh, reproduce um, because they're, they're just, they're too lethargic. They're moving around slowly um and um there so this is this is just causing a change in behavior right it's a neurotoxin um and so neurotoxins then can cause changes in the neurology behavior of different kinds of organisms in the water another one that's a growing problem is our personal care items personal care uh, chemicals. So these are things like um, um, things that are found in shampoos. If you look on the back, you're going to see a whole host of things that are just chemicals that we've we've made for particular purposes. They may have dyes in them. Um, they may be um, uh, scents. Um, oh God, it's just, just a whole host of things that could be in shampoos, uh, deodorants, um, conditioners, makeup, anything, moisturizers, Um, makeup, anything that you apply topically and then wash off at the end of the day, that is your personal care chemicals. Um, makeup can have plastics in them, so it can have microplastics, and sometimes those microplastics can't be removed. So um, we're finding that this is a buildup process. So as we use water over and over and over again, these things are going to start to build up. And as they do, um, it's gonna be harder and harder to try to figure out how to remove them. Um, they're not being removed by bacteria. They're not being removed through microfiltration. So what do we do about that? Um, and this is a real growing issue, especially as we, our population increases and we use more things topically. So, I think that is it, kids. I, um, I hope you don't listen to this all in one fell swoop, um, that you broke it up into pieces. All right. Take care.